Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about how to grow a window cleaning business. So if you have a business, if you've been in a business for a long time, or if you're brand new, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, nice to meet you. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it is better than a cat video, and hopefully you get something out of it. So go back, watch. We have 200 plus episodes uh, coming up on 220, two over. I can't even remember. A lot. And they're all 30 minutes long, and this has been going on for years. So go back, catch up. You've just found the treasure trove of information and uh, time suckery. I don't know if that's a word, but if you are somebody who watches every episode, you give the video a thumbs up on YouTube, you comment on YouTube, remember uh, most of our stuff comes through like audiobook listening, but if you're on YouTube, man, just comment, say something like, what's up, so I know you're out there, give it the thumbs up because that's how you know YouTube likes it and uh, we'll get a lot more views that way and then I'll be like, oh, look at all those views, but if you do all that and you place your orders through me, well, what's up? It's because of you that I have had actual craft branded mac and cheese. So thank you very much for all of your awesomeness. And actually, uh, fun fact, I'm keto. I haven't eaten any type of pasta or bread or anything in years. So I really haven't. But if you know something that I could buy with your oodles of commission money, let me know. Uh, but I want to be your rep. My number is 862 862- 312-2026. Yes, that's a cell phone. Text me anytime. Be like, yo, Jersey, my card is good. And I would love to put that in. It literally costs you nothing extra. It's super fast. I make it easy. I try to. And I try to include the sticker, which is somewhere back there. They're buried. I need there's one right right there. The glowing one right there. Yeah, they're holographic now. Anyway, get a limited edition sticker, put it on something, be a cool kid, and uh, yeah. If you have done all of that, and uh, duh, you have also subscribed to the AWC American Window Cleaner Magazine, you didn't even know a magazine existed, I bet. But now you do. Go check it out. AWC, uh, AWCMAG.com, American Window Cleaner Magazine. That's how all these stickers come. You want cool stickers to put on all your stuff that's all window cleaning related stickers? Go and get the subscription. You get stickers and a magazine every single month. So go there, get that. Anyway, what's up? Thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, Today we are talking about growing a window cleaning business. Now, I got to preface this. First, you know, I say it all the time. I'm just some dude with a microphone and uh, sits a little bit too close to the camera. I get it. But every one of us is looking to grow a company. Even if you're happy with where you are, which by the way, if you're on YouTube, tell me what your goal is and if you're at your goal. I want to know, for those of you who are like right there, love where you're being, tell me that you like exactly where you are. You don't want to do anything. But even if you are there, you're looking to grow as in healthiness. You want to make sure that your customers are awesome. You want to make sure that your price is right. You want to make sure your workload is exactly where you want it. So no matter where you are in business, you're looking to grow, even if it's in health or even if it's in size. So that's what we're talking about today is growing a company. Now, in business, especially in the very beginning, you look at it and be like, oh man, I could do X amount. And you throw out some weird, sexy number. I could do $100,000 a year. I could do a million dollars a year. Right, these perfect numbers that get put out there just so you you know say it and it makes sense. That makes total sense. As far as just a, like out of your rear end kind of number throwing it out there, that is awesome. You definitely can. I know companies that do millions and millions of dollars a year. I know companies who do uh, you know hundred thousand dollars a year. I know companies who do fifty thousand dollars a year. One of my uh, good uh, friends in the industry just did a hundred and like eighty thousand dollars last month so you never know you never know where you are and it just depends on where you are as far as how hard you're pushing how hard you're pushing your advertising what the structure is and all that but as you grow the business things change now when you're just a sole proprietor you do all the work yourself and i'm talking to even those guys who are happy just doing that when you make a buck you keep a buck it's super awesome right 
But even at that, there's certain things you need to do to account for growth in the business. Now, if you're looking to grow from where you are now, I'm going to throw out numbers. Again, it doesn't matter your numbers. Please don't take that, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But if you are doing $50,000 a year now, high five, it's awesome. Uh, and uh, next year, say you get to $100,000. Things are good. You got the, the balls rolling. You've done your research. You've listened to WCR Nation and implemented some, you know, uh, but you've done everything uh, right and you're growing your business. It is a different business. Look at it at 50000 and look at it at 100000 Things are different. Now, say you're a $50,000 business and you jump to, say, a $500,000 business. That company looks extremely different than the other one, right? You can't obviously do $500,000 by yourself. You obviously can't do that by working a, a normal amount of work and you know all that. Maybe now you're doing some add-ons. Maybe now you're doing pressure washing and window cleaning or window cleaning and pressure washing, right? Maybe you've implemented roof cleaning. Maybe you've done the, all the things right to grow that, but it does not look like the company did in the very beginning. And that's what we're talking about. In order to grow the company, you have to do it a certain way. I'm telling you, this is one bit of information, and I've seen it a lot. Uh, I've experienced it to some degree, and I saw that it was happening, and I toned it back. Uh, I know another uh, very good friend in the industry who just experienced this uh, uh, maybe a month or two ago, and uh, he literally changed how he did business to stop this from happening. But the truth of the matter is, you can grow too fast. And that's the saying, don't grow too fast. Don't grow too fast. And people just think of it as the amount of growth. Can you go from 50000 to 100000 in a year? Yeah. I did it in the beginning. I know that. I was doing uh, over 100% growth every single year for the first like eight years of my company. It got harder and harder. So the The... Maybe it was the eighth year or the ninth year I didn't do 100. Like, it's very hard to run triple-digit growth numbers like that, um, especially when you get bigger. You're doing a million. To go from a million to two million, that's a huge jump, right? But when you do that, it's not the amount of growth you have. It's how you grow, right? Growing healthily is the biggest, biggest challenge. There's, there's just so much to it. I mean, if you're looking at your company now going, man, things have been crazy, Things have been crazy. Record months. Okay. That's awesome. That's what we've all planned for. That's what you wanted. But back off a bit and look at it. Like, can you sustain the growth the way it is? Or are you losing your structures? Let me give you some stupid analogy. You know, I love my analogies. But if you build build a foundation for a building, it's going to be a 10-story building. You build the foundation. You pour it. They dig it. They do everything and build a 10-story building. The foundation of that building can only hold a 10 story building. If they go, man, this is a great building. Let's do 20 stories. We got to, let's increase this from 10 to 20. What has to happen? The foundation has to change to be able to support the building. Same thing with business. A lot of times, and I've seen this more than I even care to, to, to say. The reason is, is when you see this happen, there's a point of no return. You get so bad that it literally, everything was going great and it just collapses so hard you can't recover. And I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of you who are, are running a, more on the healthy side. I've seen it at least a half a dozen times with people who they have a really killer uh, uh, business and within a year or two, they're like, dude, we were doing the most we've ever done ever. And then all of a sudden, just everything was one thing after another after another. What happens is, like that building scenario, if you build a 20-story on top of a 10-story foundation, a piece, we just saw, again, when you're watching this, but uh, a building had collapsed uh, in Florida. Very sad, awful story. But if you watch a collapse, it's the top corner. That starts going, and then it takes everything with it. One thing after another after another, and the whole building... That has been standing strong for 20 years. Collapses to the ground like dust. Like sand. 
I'm telling you. So making sure that you have a, a growth plan or that you're focused on growth. Because the thing is, is when you grow, if you're doing, I mean, and I know guys who are going literally record months since like October, uh, March of last year. That's awesome. But if you're doing that and you're so busy, it's really hard to like stop and look and smell the flowers and understand what you need to change to do. If you get a bunch of subdivisions in your town and you don't change the roads, you're going to have traffic. Same concept, right? The first thing to growing a business is hiring before you need it. A lot of times people go, oh my gosh, we're so busy, we got to hire. Well, you knew in projections and you knew you saw it in the, in the, in, on the wall and you, you, you knew that you were going to continue to grow. You didn't hire when you were supposed to. Now, ABH is one of my favorite things. Always be hiring. You should always be hiring. Uh, I did this two or three years before I sold my company. I changed it over and it really changed the just feel and that weight that's on your shoulders. Oh, it was great. But if you are always hiring or hiring before you need it, you're going to have the employees when you do. Now, we know spring is going to be busy. We know fall is going to be busy. We know it kind of dips a little bit in the summer. And we know most of the time, depending on where you are, if you're in uh, Arizona-ish, maybe not, uh, some parts of California. But February, not real great. January, pretty slow, right? So that's the time. In February, you hire because you're going to be busy in March and April. Well, Catch-22 comes into play, right? you got to have the work for the employee, but you need the employee to do the work. What comes first, chicken or the egg? Employer or the job? But the problem is, is if you have it, you have it. Same reason why uh, military personnel, when they go out there, they got 50 pounds of stuff in their back. They don't use 48 pounds of the stuff, but they got it. That's what you need to do in business. You need to prepare for that. Hiring before you need it is a big one. Big one. Make sure that you're on top of that. By the way, if you're slow or uh, at a decent pace, a, uh, a doable pace when you're slow, hiring is so much easier. You put them out and they may not get 40 hours right, a week, right away, but you're teaching them so that when it is busy, now you're not stumbling over this new person. The new person isn't slowing everybody down because they kind of know a little bit more. Hiring before you need it is huge. Another thing that people always kind of lose sight on when they grow is, is their image. And I beat this like a, a dead horse. I know that. But kicking up your image. Think about big companies in your area. Not even window cleaning. Think of like HVAC guys or lawn care companies. Think of the biggest ones that you know. I will promise you that their trucks are always clean. Their equipment is new. They're shiny. Everything is logoed and lettered. I guarantee it. Their trucks look nice. Their trucks probably the same style and year of truck. Maybe they're all the same color of truck. Same graphics, same pl places. Their uh, uniforms all look amazing. They're building a big company. When you go into a little, little coffee shop that stands coffee, no one's probably has an outfit on. You know, Maybe they dress whatever they want. That's cool. Their logo's up there, but nobody's ever thought about it. Their logo's not on the coffee cup. They got some generic one that says coffee on their cup. That's a small business. They're not focused on the growth. They want to have a successful business. But when you jump up to the next level, that stuff all comes in. Those guys have that many trucks is because people look at them and they impress and they have a great experience every single time, no matter where their crews are. And if you're going to have more than one crew, they have to do the exact same thing. It's like why McDonald's has pictures of how to put the burgers. You know, in the back of a McDonald's, by like the grill or skillet or whatever they would call it, there's pictures. Pictures. There's manuals. When you make a quarter pounder, the cheese goes here, the sauce goes here. You put the ketchup, then the mustard. You think in your head like, oh my gosh, they're just, they're, they're just... They're micromanaging too much. No, they're uniforming everything. I can go to a McDonald's in California. I'll pay more. I can go there and get a burger. I can go to a, a McDonald's in North Carolina and they'll be the exact same no matter where I am. I know the experience. The experience I get when I go into whatever restaurant that's a chain that's all over, the reason I get that experience is because they want me to get that experience. That's where you are. 
you've built a structure and experience in your business. You want everybody to get your same experience that they get it now and they get it next year. They get it now, they tell five people, those five people get it. If it's a different experience every single time, you're never going to build comfort. You're never going to build understanding or expectations. You're never going to grow because people don't know what they're getting. Kick up your image a notch. Remember, shirts, trucks. And I'm not saying a lot of you guys, well, I don't have enough money for... uh, Okay, you have enough money to turn your hose on and wash your car, your truck, to vacuum the inside once a week, to wax everything. Get some of that, man. Uh, Turtle Wax makes some... um, uh, Not nano polish. What is it? The ceramic-like stuff, dude. It's like 15 bucks a bottle. Stuff is amazing. Get that. Put it on. Take pride. Pride can be anywhere. Because once you start getting bigger, that's when you got enough money to buy some new trucks. Then you start matching trucks. Everything's the same color, same logos. You're now wrapping things. Things look better. The bigger you get, the better you are. The more you're investing in your company, the bigger your image is. But for right now, kick your image up. Focus on the reinvesting side of it, especially in your image. You want to be a big company? Dress like a big company right? Another one's getting a handbook. We talked about that in McDonald's or any other fast, any chain of anything. It's the same thing. Here's another one. You want to talk uh, retail. In retail, when you go to like an academy sports, I don't know if they have those all over. Dick's, Cabela's, figure a sport and it doesn't matter. Whatever. Pick a Costco. There's lots of places that have Costco's, right? In a Costco, they have sheets, I don't know what they're called. They never worked the retail side of it, but they have sheets, and those sheets show you what the shelves should look like. God, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> they they show you what everything would look like. Every store will look the exact same. Every one. And of course, you know, the structure when they build buildings, they every Taco Bell looks the same, every whatever, but they go all the way down to the store so that when you go to a, a, a Dick Sporting Goods or a, a Cabela's or Academy or Costco, you know that this is where this stuff is in every one. It's the experience. They're planning for that. You need to too. Another thing is getting a handbook. This one's kind of weird because a lot of times people want to get this after they think they're big. But the thing is, is it's really, really easy, especially if you're a one-man show, to create a handbook that explains every aspect and facet of your company. What time do you get to work? What is the first thing you do when you get to work? What's how does the speech go and the 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 door introductions work? Uh, what are you giving them? What are you collecting? What is the procedure to clean a window? What if you go and really build a handbook? Really build a handbook. All of a sudden, you have X Y Z window cleaning in a book. XYZ window cleaning. I can hand it to anybody and they can read it and they know what XYZ window cleaning is. They understand the system. Right? The uniformity is there. The experience is there. Now they know what you're expecting. If you just say, all right, well, uh, watch Tommy here and he's... They're not going to catch everything. There's some things that may be missed or whatever. If you have a handbook, it explains everything. Now you get it. Buy a Chick-fil-A. Buy a Subway, anything. They give you a big old binder. And that binder has absolutely everything that that company does from how often they clean their bathrooms to what they do to cook. Everything. They hand you the company. They hand that to you and they say, not only do you need to read this and understand it, you have to adhere to this book. This is our company. You have to do it this way. Again, to build the experience. If you give that book, your employee manual, to every new employee, read the manual, read the manual, read the manual, look at the manual, they all of a sudden, the same experience is all the way across it. A lot of people, they wait too long. All of a sudden, they're like, oh man, I got multiple crews, and this whole thing is just, uh, this guy does it this way, this guy doesn't talk to anybody. It's, ah, uh, well, you're not building for growth. You're, you're just, running it you're just trying to keep your head above water while you're making money and getting being busy right 
preparing to be busy is doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe this is a winter project. Maybe you're a little bit slower now. You know fall's going to kick it up. Either way, an employee handbook allows everybody to be on the same page, literally, with no pun intended, I swear. I don't know. Uh, no, handbook's really important. It sucks, though. I When I built my handbook, it took months, and it literally was probably 20, 25 revisions. Everybody went through it. What are we missing? What do we put? What do we do? Big meeting, whiteboard, write it all down. Give me the ideas of like the out, like what it is you want in there. Like, like I said, the introduction. We call it a front door introduction, right? That's the when you get to the job. Hey, it's Jersey with X Y Z window cleaning. We're here to clean your windows. Blah blah blah. That was in there. When you put that as a title, then you break it all down to here's the steps. It really sucks. It really sucks to read, and it really sucks to build. So you want it to be easy. You want to put tabs in it. You want people to like, oh, customer experience, go to that that section, right? How to clean, go to that section. Maintenance, go to that section. You can see when the water fed's supposed to be changed. You can see when the this is that and this and this and this. And when new people come in, it's easier for them to understand the whole process when they get that. I'm not a reader or a comprehender. I don't understand uh, reading super easy, but it gives you that other understanding of this is how it's supposed to be, Right? So getting a handbook is is tough. Building a handbook is tough, but reading it and understanding it and is also also tough. Advertise like your business depends on it, because it does. Understand that you may have trajectory now, but that trajectory could stop. Remember what happened with COVID. You have to be hitting, striking when the iron is hot. You have to advertise when people are calling you. I know this is weird. We'll go back to the marketing calendar. I won't jump into that again because I've talked about it a thousand times. But building out the structure of your advertising and kicking your advertising up a notch is huge. Going back to how you do business, how much money are you putting into your advertising? What's the percentage of gross sales? A lot of people just go, I don't know. I'll get some extra money. I, I, I send out a mailer. Okay. No company anywhere that is growing to any size does that. That's what's mom and pa, right? That's an unhealthy way to do it. Say you're going to do 10%. If you're reinvesting 10%, look at ROIs. ROIs on 10%, you're just making money with your money, right? You're investing in yourself. If you can do all that, put it all out there, but advertise. If you're doing 2% right now, kick it up to 5 if you're doing five, kick it up to 10. Make sure you're focusing on advertising because advertising is what makes you money. Split testing is what makes advertising dollars go even farther. But there is nothing worse than not advertising because you're having a rough time. If you're in winter, obviously don't advertise. But, oh man, you know, I just, I, I don't have the money right now or I'm too busy. It's spring. I can't advertise right now. That's like, you know, you're treading water and you stop to save energy. You're not saving energy. You die. You sink. That's kind of what's happening. Keep the trajectory up. Advertise like your business depends on it. A big thing with advertising that people don't understand is that if you're doing a percentage of advertising, it will change with your company. That's awesome. It's awesome. What I do is usually you do a full forecast, but then you pull from the last month. That's what I always did just to make it a little bit quicker. Not always uh, does it. So if you're running a marketing calendar, you're going to know where you are once everything starts. If you're running a percentage off of last year, you're going to be lower than this year. Obviously, this year you're going to make more. So what we would do is a projection on growth and that projection on growth is be, would be what we use as our marketing budget. So if, say, next year, this year we did 75000 but our projection next year is 100000 I'm going to base our uh, marketing dollars from 100000 My 10% is going to be I'm going to $10,000 in marketing from that. My ROI could be, you know, percent, 
one and a half percent, depending on what you're doing. And those are total numbers. So if you're doing those are like um, percentage on numbers back. So again, EDDM percentages is what I just was talking about. If you don't know that, that's like sending out a thousand pieces at a one percent return means you're going to have uh, ten pieces back. 10 pieces back, you're like, well, out of 1,000, you're only getting 10. Yeah, but what's your average ticket? 300 bucks? If you got 10 at 300 bucks, $3,000. If at 1%, you spent less than $3,000, uh, a lot less, to send out only 1,000 pieces, you're going to make money. 1,000 pieces, uh, typically say 30 cents a piece. Uh, at 1,000, you're looking at the math, right? So that's what show your total ROI. Now, if you don't do it that way, People go, man, things are getting slow. We should advertise. Now you're taking money that you need, you didn't allocate, to spend on times where you're slower just to try to get things to stick. You don't know the time. You don't know the, it's the schedule. It's not planned. It's not put out there. You don't know what you're doing next month. Maybe next month you're so busy. It's not because you advertise, you know? It is always uh, a little bit tough, but advertise like you mean it. And the biggest one, the biggest one, in my opinion, is upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. People will always wait too long to upgrade. What am I talking about? Software, calendar programs, uh, marketing uh, programs. Say you're doing constant contact and you're just sending out emails. Well, now go up to a constant contact. Go up to a MailChimp, right? SEO, website. Use Justin Monk. I really cannot tell you enough good things about Justin Monk. Monk SEO, M-O-N-K SEO. I've used him for a long time. You use somebody like that, it kicks you in to a whole other level. It takes time to get the ball rolling on SEO. It takes time to get the ball rolling on a new website. If you're growing, you know you're growing, upgrade that stuff now. If you could have an amazing, amazing website and the SEO, remember SEO is how people find it. You could have the coolest billboard ever, ever, and if it's behind a building and next to a dumpster, no one's going to see it. doesn't matter how nice it is, right? You have to SEO a website. If you're not doing SEO, you got a cool website that no one's seeing. You got a really nice vehicle wrap on the inside of your vehicle, right? Anyway, Justin Monk SEO, Monk SEO. But uh, by the way, um, if you want to say what's up to Justin Monk and you talk to him, say... Hey, and Jersey says, hi, uh, I haven't talked to him for at least a week. So what's up, Justin? Uh, but you're upgrading all of those things, right? If you wait to upgrade, say, your calendar program or your marketing program, your CRM, all that fun stuff. If you wait, all of a sudden it's too long. If you're new in business and you have 50, employee, or 50 uh, 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 customers, it's a lot easier to get 50 customers into the scheduling program than it is to have 500, 5,000. Can the programs and softwares that you're using handle your, your uh, growth? Can it handle your new numbers? That's what you need to find out is update and upgrade everything that you possibly can. Now, premise on this, I make money by selling things, right? If somebody wants to put an order in, I make money because I put the order in, right? My goal is to help people. So I'm not pushy. I'm not salesy. But whenever I say this, people always are like, oh, they always say that because you're a salesman. Yeah, you're just, you're just hawking your stuff. Take, take it from a business owner, not a salesperson. Upgrading your equipment before you need to upgrade your equipment, that's the key. This time of year, man, the worst part of what we do is people call and be like, I need this. Zero peer. Zero peers at one point because of the stupid steel shortage. We're like four weeks behind. Somebody calls and goes, oh my gosh, my system just went bad. We got to get another truck on. I need this equipment. You got four weeks. What? You've waited too long. You didn't prepare for growth. That's the big thing is people are looking too short, right? They're looking at the ground ahead of them and not what's at the end of the road. The problem is it's a little bit harder. You have to look at everything. It's like driving. When you're driving, your, your eyes are doing this. You're checking your mirrors for what's behind you, but you're focused on the road. You're focused at what's right in front of you, but you're also looking up the street. What's going on up there? If you're not looking past what you're at right now, you're not looking at the traffic up there, 
That's when an accident happens. You're not paying attention. You have to in business. No one will ever tell you not to look backwards, not to see where you came from. It's to learn. But you notice when you look in a mirror, you just glance. Always focus on forward. Focus on the near, but focus on the far. That's where all the equipment comes into play. Software. Maybe it's time to do software. Maybe it's time to do this calendar. Maybe, again, websites, SEO stuff. Maybe that's all now it's time. If you go from having 10 visitors a month, cool, congrats. What if I told you next year this time you get 100 visitors a month? What if you're going from 100 to 1,000 visitors a month? As things grow, your website needs to be able to hold that. It needs to be able to uh, allow that without crashing the servers. And it also has to look like something that's awesome. It has to look like something you're representing. If it looks like garbage, then it's not going to perform. So upgrade everything you can. Just be prepared for it. Remember, growing has to be done right. Everybody says, don't grow too fast. But what they really mean is don't grow too wrong. Right? Anyway, there you go. That is my uh, my uh, humdrum for the uh, entire week. So I hope you got something out of it. If it's uh, supplies you need, which I know you'll need them. I know. I know you. Hey, you listening or watching. I know you're needing supplies. Why are you ordering yourself? Order through me. I'm your man. I'm your guy. I'm your supply guy. 862-312-2026, 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Save it. Really, save it. You got questions? Need help on bids? Send it. Email me, jersey at windowcleaner.com. Text me. Jersey, everything's in my cart. It's good. Can I put an order in? Let me put your orders in. It's how I make that awesome virtual high five. And uh, yeah, it's super, super easy to do that. Get your subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine, the best magazine, longest running magazine. This magazine has been out since 1986. It has only gotten better throughout the years, and it is absolutely amazing now. Amazing articles, super dope pictures. I mean, it's it's just it's just cool. Plus, you get to see some new um, uh, gear, and of course, you get the sticker packs. Go to that. It's awcmag.com. Thanks, guys and gals. Hope you have a great week. And until next time, go out there and be epic.